In this video, we're going to cover how to create in-place elements, um, in particular a custom railing. Now, in Revit, some people try to force the railings to do everything, and sometimes they just won't do what you want them to do. So what you can do is you can use custom components in Revit to build whatever you'd like. For instance, if I roll over the stair and I hit tab a couple times, you'll see I have that stringer there. Uh, I may change that stringer out, or I may actually go up here and adjust it, or even take it even further. I may come in here, edit the type, and I may say, you know what, do I want a stringer? I drop this down, I'm saying, nope, no string on that side. String on this side, nope, no string on this side. And then I could actually build my own stringer. So I could build some custom shape. Let's say I want to use bicycle wheels to, you know, whatever it may be. Just whatever you want to create to make this happen. So uh, you can actually take your stairs back to the basics and then move forward again. Now I'm going to undo that and undo that because we're going to talk more about the railing and building a custom one here. Now the first thing we'll need to do is, uh, again, consider what tools are best for the job. And in this instance, what we're doing, probably an in-place family would be best. I'm going to come in here, and as I start up, I have to consider a couple things. First of all, where will I be working? I'm going to work right on this stringer right here. So I'm going to set up a work plane. So I'm going to hit reference plane. And then I come down here, and I'm going to pick right on the center, if I can get it on the center of that stringer. Now, I know that stringer is actually two inches wide, so since it won't stick to it, I'm just going to draw one like so. And then I'm going to move it one inch. So I just grab it, hit the move command, pick a point, drag the direction I want to go, and pick. So now I know that center of that location. Now at this time I'm going to grab it and I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it, let's say, uh, panel one. Oh, rolled outside of the box. Panel one. And I hit apply on that. Now um, what that's doing is setting up a work plane for me to work on. So I'm going to back up just a little bit here and I'm going to go to that section. Now I can be using elevation for this too, but you see as my section, I'll pick a scale that works for me. I'm going to use something a little bit larger so my line work uh, isn't um, too thick. Now at this time, if I go to draw something, Revit wants to know, well, where am I actually drawing? So what we're going to do is set the work plane. Being that we gave it a name, you'll see it says panel 1. So now anything I draw will be on that plane. Now what we're trying to do is going to have a rail come off of here, come up perpendicular, and come out. So I'm going to use a couple of tools here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually build a solid uh, inside a family and then use that as a kind of a, a framework. Drop this down, model in place, and what is this? It's a railing. That way if I turn things on and off, categories, this will turn off in the railings layer. Railing 1, that's fine. Now um, to set this up, I want an extrusion, and I'm going to pick. Now I, I pick, let's say here, and then I, I could lock it if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it unlocked. Uh, pick here, and I pick here. Now I've got those lines in place. Now I'm going to actually come up top and I'm going to use pick offset. And let's say I want it three, three foot six, three foot six. Okay. Hover over it. And now see how that one's going three foot six out, three foot six out, and three foot six out. So that's three foot six perpendicular to here. And that's actually what we want. The last thing I'm going to do is come in here and draw in a little shape like so. Whoop. I got my three foot six still running. <laughs> Let me delete that. We'll try that again. I want to draw a line, zero, okay, and we pick from here to here. Now, what I'm doing is I'm building the framework. Uh, I'm going to build this in one solid just so you can see how it works. If I wanted to, I could build it in a couple of solids, but I'm probably just going to copy an item down in a moment. So here is the elements that I want. And when it hits this landing, I may have a weird scenario, but we'll try to deal with that when we get here. So there's the little element, and now I hit finish. Now, what Revit has done is created this solid and you'll see that big old chunky solid uh, item floating around. And what that is, that's going to be our placeholder. Now, being that it's a placeholder, I'll go up top, and now I'm going to hit create a sweep. Now, the sweep I'm going to use is I'm actually going to pick the path. What path of this item as I've set up as a placeholder? And I come in here and I pick all those lines. Now, Revit's going to sweep the shape along that path. Now, I'm going to come on in here kind of close. And you'll see I've got some line weight heavy there, so I'm going to hit th that button. And now it's time finish with oop, finish with my path. Now it's time to edit the profile. Now it wants to draw right here, so I'm gonna start and I pick and I pick a certain side. I'm not sure if I picked on it. I seem to have missed it there. Let's try that again. Circle from okay, there we go. And I'll come out and say maybe an inch and a half round. So there we go. 
So three quarters is the radius. Multiply that by two, inch and a half. We hit finish. We're happy with the shape, happy with the path, and we hit finish. Now you'll see I put that rail in there, and it's going all the way up. Now if I wanted to put a radius in there, what I would have done is put a little radius on this box, and it would have followed it around. Now that's in place. Now if I hit finish right now, the problem is this box is actually going to be seen um, in my model. So I'm going to grab the box. I'm going to say you or a placeholder. So I don't want you to be visible when I go back into my real world. When I hit finish model, I'm back in my real world. And you'll see I have that element in place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some intermediary components here. I'm going to go back to that family, add it in place. And you'll see I have this pipe right here. Now I'm going to do another one pretty much right on top of it um, so I can then drag it on up. So my work plane is set. So let's go back to my section. Okay. Now, just to make it maybe easier, I'll come in here and I'm going to draw another line. And I'm going to create, let's say, another sweep. Now it's going to say, do you want to draw it or what? So I'm going to actually sketch the path. So I'm going to sketch maybe right here, and I'm going to try to get perpendicular to the other one and to right there. All right, so there's the path, right? Now, um, just like before, <coughs> now I'm going to go spin it around. Finish the path. Thank you. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw in Edit Profile. And it comes up. Again, draw a little circle. Make sure you pick in the right spot. Come out. Whoop, that's a line. Just draw a circle. To come out three quarters of an inch. There we go. Hit Finish. And then Finish again and Finish again. Now you'll see it's there. Now one thing we need to do is add materials to these elements. So I'm going to grab that element and hold the Control key down and grab this element because materials are done per element in a family. So these both these materials, I hit the little uh, by category. And I'm just going to force a color. Um, we can also use some parameters. But I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say, let's say, come down here, and this is going to be a uh, parking stripe. It's bright yellow. It's just kind of an easy one for us to see. Now, you'll see that I put it in there. And if I go to, let's say, shaded, uh, consistent color, you'll see that bright, that nice and bright, right? So uh, there they are. Now you still see a big chunk of stuff around us, so let's go back to Hidden Line. And now I hit Finish the Model. Now when I finish the model, you'll notice that these items all work as a unit. And you're like, oh man, well I got that little piece in there, I wanted to put it in different places. And that's fine. We're doing step at a time here, baby steps. Again, I'm going to edit the model. And I'm going to go back to my section view. So here we are. I, I've got this box in here that's not letting me see the objects behind it. So I'm going to go to Wireframe. And then I should be able to see what's behind it. There it is. Now, being it's on a work plane, the cool thing is if I take this guy and I go to copy him, see he's locked to the work plane, which is actually good in this instance. I can hit copy, and I'll grab from, let's say, a point here. And I'm going to drag it on up to the next point that I want, maybe here. And then again, copy maybe multiple. And say from maybe the point right here, I'll try to get maybe the midpoint. And I'll bring it right up to that edge right here, like so. Now, Maybe we want to bring it down a little bit. Again, it's up to you on how you want that to work. Now, I'm probably going to need one from, I'm not sure how the design was, but maybe one here, one here. But I'll take this guy again. I'm going to copy it again, turn on the multiple. And again, I'll take that endpoint. I'm going to bring it over here and say from maybe there, OK? And maybe not. And then maybe somewhere in here. All right. Now, we can come in here and put dimensioning if we want. Um, annotate, align. I'll say uh, from the center of this guy to the, so we'll We'll pick up on this one somewhere. Great. It's not one to pick up on it. Uh, let's say it's to the edge of this guy. All right. Let's see. We'll pick up on this one. Yeah. Doesn't want to pick up. Well, come on. Pick up on something. Come on. Baby, baby. Okay. Pull it down and say equal. Um, have to remove a constraint. Um, well, you could try that out. As you can see, sometimes uh, things blow up. All right. So I've got this guy here. Uh, now I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate it. Uh, hit the rotate command. Once rotate about the center, I'm going to say pick a new point. I'll pick maybe at the corner here. And I'll say from, let's say, that angle, which I'm kind of faking up to this angle. Uh, so there we have a pole. It looks like it's not straight, so I'll do that again. So I'm going to grab this element. Okay. Rotate about a base point. I'll see if I can pick something clean on this one right there. And then I'll come up here, and this is going to be my reference from here. Roll it up and to here. Okay, so now it's standing straight up. So uh, we can then, again, copy this thing around where we want. Or we find out this isn't working for us, so we hit Edit Sweep. 
um, I can pick that element and I'll hit let's say sketch path grab the path drag it up crash it into it uh, I could lock it to that if I wanted to hit finish and again I really don't know what the design is but you can see how we can start to set these panels up so just moving these things around getting the way we want so at that point let's say I'm happy uh, the last thing I'm going to do is you'll notice that this pipe and that pipe they're not they don't look like they're welded together because they're not they're just sitting out in space uh, but these look nice it's kind of look like they're welded together so the last thing I'm going to do is hit join I'm going to say join A and B and see how they melt together see how clean that looks so we're going to melt them together okay and we just kind of go ahead and weld them so you pretty much this is the same thing the guy in the welding shop is going to do right he's going to lay out the pieces and he's going to start welding them all together so we just weld them all together it's a beautiful thing so there we go at this point we hit finish the model um, and then we're going to go back to our 3D view and we'll turn it up to let's say uh, shaded or consistent colors you know, so we have our super hot yellow cool rail of fun floating around the objects here so uh, next next video we'll go into creating our custom panels that fit in here